Hi, I'm John, a community currency engineer, Termel, and I spent the last couple of weeks sending emails to every newspaper I could find on the internet and every blog I could find saying, hey, why not make your IOUs payable in taxes so that you guys can pop out of depression like the provinces in Argentina did who paid people with their small denomination bonds and use them to pay taxes. So urging these people to wise up and not be stupid compared to the Argentinians may have paid off. An article ends up state lawmakers back bill to make IOUs legal tender payable in all state taxes and fees. Here's a story leading up to it. So everybody's heard that California is going broke and they're going to have to pay people with IOUs. Well, that's a great idea if you do it right. So I've spoken to this before, but I decided I was going to go and spread the word. And these are the 200 different newspapers and websites who've been talking about California IOUs in the past few weeks. And I went and left commentary there. So I'll just read a few of the headlines, stuff like... <clears throat> From uh, breaking news, California controller says issuing three billion in IOUs a sign of fiscal mismanagement. Well, who cares as long as they work? But the point is, it's only mismanagement to people who think that the orthodox management that got us into this system, into this problem, is not mismanagement. So it is. So then another one which is California has nothing left but IOUs from the Daily Paul page. And uh, yeah, but they also got Disneyland and they got movies that they can back up their IOUs with, for sure. California's IOU fever is likely to spread to other states. Um, and this was June the 30th. And we're saying, wow, let's hope the other states wise up too. But to every one of these posts, I went and left this message. There's nothing wrong with small denomination California state IOUs if I or anyone else can pay taxes with them. When Argentina's government workers were faced with cuts, their unions talked six state governments into paying them with small denomination state bonds, which could be used to pay for state services and taxes, and which everyone accepted as useful currency. Best of all, when the local currencies pegged at a time standard of money, how many dollars per unskilled hour of child labor? Hours earned locally can be intertraded with other time banks globally. In 1999, I paid for 39 nights out of 40 nights in Europe with an IOU for a night back in Canada worth five hours. UN Millennium Declaration Unilets Resolution C6 to governments is for a time-based currency to restructure the global financial architecture. See my banking systems engineering analysis at YouTube slash King of the Poppers. Too bad California state IOUs won't be accepted in payment of taxes and services like state bonds were in Argentina. Too bad California state IOUs will be denominated too big to use as local currency. Too bad Argentina people were smart enough to avoid the tent cities catastrophe and California people are too stupid to follow their example. So, I went to 200 different sites in California and the United States, wherever they talked about California IOUs. I had a Google alert to tell me about it, and I left the message saying, too bad you people are too stupid to do like they did in Argentina and create their own provincial bond currency. You could do the same thing, or even IOU currency. So, July 1st. California, the have-nots and the haves by Felix Salmon, the blog. And there's a, a question by someone, uh, uh, Guan Yang, who says, Will it be possible to use California IOUs to pay debts to the state of California, like taxes? Well, we sure hope so. And then there was another guy, uh, the Adam, who said, Why can't members of the legislature get paid with IOUs? It's not like they're doing their job. Well, yeah, of course they should be paid with IOUs to a certain per percentage of their salary anyway. And then here's a great article, the Billy blog, and this is by William F. Mitchell, professor of economics, director, center of full employment and equity, University of Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia. And he has something called Billy blog. And in it, he's talking about California IOUs are not currency, but they could be. He says, I seem to be stuck in the U.S. at the moment, blog-wise. 
One story that's very interesting at the moment is the plan by the Californian state government to begin issuing IOUs, reserved warrants, because it is, quote, run out of cash, unquote. As far as I can work out, the IOUs will not become a second currency alongside the U.S. dollar. But one simple extra announcement by the state would be enough to allow California to be sovereign in their IOUs. What do you suppose that extra complication might be? So he goes on to give some statistics and some math and some graphs about the situation there. And then he says, for a state within a sovereign state, the increasing deficit has to be funded because a state government does face a revenue constraint. It has to increase taxes, cut spending, or increase its borrowing, state debt issuance, to resolve the fiscal deterioration. Trying to resolve the burgeoning Californian state deficit by increasing taxes and cutting spending at the height of the worst downturn the economy has faced in years is madness. It will certainly make matters worse. Which brings us to the story at hand. The state of California, the world's sixth largest economy, plans to begin issuing IOUs formerly known as registered warrants, to the tune of $3 billion from July the 2nd to fund its commitments to various suppliers and contractors to government, university students, and welfare and pension recipients. While the two major banks that operate in California, the Bank of America and Wells Fargo, have said that they are uncertain as to whether they'll accept state-issued IOUs in return for cash, they have an incentive to do so because they can then earn the interest payable once the redemption date is up in October almost 4% in three months. That's like 16% a year. How can they say no? So, will, who will get the IOUs? The most disadvantaged, stupid. No other group would tolerate being treated this way. The State Controller's Office has some analysis of how the IOU system will work and who will be provided with them in lieu of cash. It will also provide a fact for the warrants payment system. We learned that the largest proportion of IOUs will go to the aged, 590 million, the unemployed, 495 million, and the disabled, 363 million. First, there is no guarantee of convertibility into cash. I say this even though the state will, if it has enough cash, accept them on October the 1st for cash. But there is no stipulation that they can be traded in the meantime as if they were cash. Second, there is no provision that a Californian resident can pay their state taxes using the warrants as contra payments, barter payments basically for state taxes. In other words, the warrants are not currency. If the state of California announced that it would accept these IOU vouchers as legitimate vehicles to liquidate one's tax obligations to the state, then the situation changes dramatically. To circulate the vouchers, all state employees would receive some or all of their pay in IOUs, bits of paper or via electronic transfer into special voucher banks, which they could then use to pay their taxes. If all Californian citizens could similarly extinguish their tax obligations using these vouchers, then there would be a generalized demand for them, which means that state employees would be able to spend the IOUs in shops as they would the U.S. dollar, just like in Argentina. The state of California would have no financial constraint in the IOU vouchers. It would simply spend them, pay its workers, and collect taxes later as people handed them back to satisfy their legal obligations for the services they got. Imposing the tax obligation in vouchers creates a demand for them and allows them to circulate as a currency. Soon enough, the banking system would develop IOU voucher accounts and related products in this way, the state of California could more easily maintain its level of services without imposing huge costs on the disadvantaged, which they're forcing to accept IOUs. The state could also expand public employment to attenuate the labor market impacts of the recession. So if they ever do accept them for taxes, well, there'll be lots of jobs because Arnie's going to have a new kind of cash. There might be some reluctance to hold the vouchers. In general terms, whether Californians would desire to demand the IOUs would depend on how enforceable the tax obligations are. The state of California could probably enforce the tax obligations and allow them to be extinguished using vouchers. This would be sufficient to generate a viable demand for the IOUs as an operating currency. I'm not considering any constitutional issues here, just a logical point. 
And he's right, because constitutionally, in the Constitution of the United States, it says that the states aren't allowed to provide their own chips to save themselves, even if the feds aren't doing it for them. So you know what you say about a problem like that. It's a Gordian knot. You're all tied up. What can you do when there's such a big knot you don't know how to untie? Ask Alexander the Great what he did with the Gordian knot. If the state had have decreed that any resident could extinguish their tax obligations using the warrants, then they would become more broadly accepted as an alternative currency in California, and the disadvantage that those citizens face who will be forced to accept them in lieu of cash payments would be considerably reduced or eliminated entirely. Eliminated entirely. 